to another episode of the Ultimate AFL Wrap-Up Show for Season 2017. This is where I wrap up every game of every round. And today I'm going to be wrapping up a massive opening round of the 2017 AFL season. It had it all. There were some upsets. It delivered the goods, the opening round. So let's not muck around. Let's get straight in to having a look back at Round 1 of the 2017 AFL season. So, of course, the season started on Thursday night at the MCG with the traditional uh, opening blockbuster between Colton and Richmond. A lot of people have uh, criticised this as uh, being the opener to a season, considering where the two teams were at last year, and I agree with that in some sense. But then again, I did find this match quite interesting on Thursday night at the G. The Tigers did uh, dominate the first quarter. They did hold a half-time lead of 13-5 to 7-4. Uh, Blues, however, got back in the third quarter, kicking five goals to two, so it's fair to say they won the uh, the third quarter and got themselves back into it. And they actually looked uh, at three-quarter time in it in some sense, but then uh, not quite uh, out of it in some sense as well, if that makes sense. But uh, they uh, the uh, Tigers held a uh, three-quarter time lead of 15-11 to 12-4, uh, but however the Tigers were able to uh, have a strong fourth quarter and uh, hold them off, and Richmond uh, come away with uh, the first points for season 2017. The final score, Colton 14-5-89, defeated by Richmond 2012-132. Colton never really looked in it, but never really looked out of it, if that makes sense. Uh, so... You know, it was kind of an in-between uh, where, you know, it wasn't quite the one-sided game. It was quite entertaining and fast-flowing at times. And uh, I enjoyed the match. It was a great opener to the, uh, the se to season 2017. I know other people have uh, different views, but that's just my opinion. Uh, the goal kickers for Colton, uh, Wittering and Wright kicked three. Cruiser and Savani kicked two each. Casbolt Gibbs. Armfield and Thomas kicked singles, while for Richmond, Dustin Martin had an incredible game. We'll talk about that uh, in just a moment. He kicked four goals. Uh, Castagna kicked two, as well as Butler and Nekovarkas, who is a, uh, a Tasmanian uh, uh, from Georgetown, played a bit of footy for North Launceston. Uh, great to see him on the scoreboard with two. Rioli kicked two, as well. Uh, Caddy Edwards, Greg Rewalt, Cochin and Lloyd kicked singles each as well as Prestia and also Vustelin. Uh, now the injuries for Colton, uh, Jed Lamb uh, had, has a bit of knee soreness, uh, uh, however he actually uh, was a late withdrawal from the match, uh, no injuries to Richmond and uh, 73,137 attended this game at the MCG. Now this year on the Ultimate AFL Wrap-Up Show I'll be giving votes for each match. It will go towards a Best and Fairest Award uh, for this show. So let me give you my votes for this match. Here they are. I've given one vote to Dion Prestia, the former Suns uh, player who actually played in front of his largest crowd at the G on Thursday night. 28 disposals, one goal, uh, 15 kicks, got 100 three fantasy points if you're into fantasy uh, he did very well for his new club in this opening game uh, the two votes uh, has gone to a Colton player Mark Murphy I thought he was outstanding for Colton 35 disposals most of them kicks uh, he was the best Blues player on the ground it's no doubt about that 139 fantasy points he actually got equal fantasy points uh, with Martin who had a stunning game and the three votes they have gone to Dustin Martin he uh, had an outstanding game with uh, 33 disposals, 4 goals, 23 kicks, 10 handballs. Uh, I tell you what, it's a great time to be a free agent, really, because uh, I'm sure more than a couple of clubs will be chasing him uh, as the season comes to an end and uh, 
and 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 but I think he will sign with with Richmond. That's just my feeling. But um, yeah, what a great time to be a free agent if you're performing like that. Friday night we were back at the MCG for a, another blockbuster between Collingwood and the Western Bulldogs. Travis Cloak against his old side. And uh, they played a couple of uh, good clashes between each other last year. So we were in for another cracker at the G on Friday night. However, the Bulldogs, they did kick the opening four goals of the game. Looked like they were going to just take it away from the Pies early and, and leave it at that. That wasn't the case, though, because the Pies were able to work their way back into it in the second quarter. The Dogs led 9-2 to the Pies, 7-9 at... Uh, at half time and uh, it was an interesting uh, second half to the start to the second half at least because Collingwood hit the front early in the second half for the first time of the match however the dogs being the good team they are and the premiers we know they uh, the side to beat in the competition this year they were able to uh, kick five uh, unanswered goals and uh, keep Collingwood out of the match Collingwood tried to get the lead back uh, in the game it's fair to say that but the dogs uh, were able to win by 14 points and hold them off. Although Collingwood credit to them because uh, I thought uh, at times their their play was uh, was quite good and uh, their tackling pressure is quite outstanding. We know that they're, they're the uh, the best tackling side of, of 2016. So they uh, with their pressure along with uh, their running midfield just need a little bit more strength up forward, but. Uh, they could be a contender for the for the top eight, I think, uh, this year. Although the Dogs did win 15-10-100, defeated Collingwood 12-14-86 in front of uh, over 66,000 at the G. I thought that was quite disappointing, to be honest, considering uh, the two teams. I guess you could, you could say well, Collingwood's the biggest club in the AFL, one of the biggest, and, and the Bulldogs, I guess you could say, they're kind of rising to be one of the biggest. But, uh, yeah, it was quite a disappointing uh, crowd, I thought. Uh, although, still a big crowd, uh, but and, and no complaints with, with that uh, whatsoever. The goal kickers for Collingwood, uh, Vasolo kicked three. He was outstanding. Side bottom, Penderbury kicked two each. Uh, and then White, Main, Trelaw, Gold, Sack, and also Hoskin, Elliott kicked singles to get themselves in the, on the goal sheet. Uh, the Western Bulldog goal kickers, Hunter, was quite uh, good in this match, kicked three goals. Johannesson, the Northern Smith uh, of last year's grand final, kicked two, as well as Bond and Pelly and Picken also kicking two. And then Matthew Boyd, Stringer, Cloak, Libertoy, Cramery, and McLean kicking singles. How good was it when Cloak kicked that goal? Uh, the Collingwood fans not happy. They're a bit of an angry bunch down there at uh, the Holden Centre, aren't they? Uh, especially when uh, a former player who uh, played a considerate amount of time at the uh, at the club, uh, they are very when he's kicking goals that uh, they uh, can get very very angry. There, the injuries. Uh, James Aish was replaced by Chris Main, which is um, I was quite happy that Chris Main came into the side in the end because I think it was a bit of a uh, a bit of a a bit of a kind of a bad decision to have him as an emergency because I thought he played all right uh, at his new club. Dale Morris has broken his leg, uh, right leg there, so that is bad news there for the Western Bulldogs. Could probably miss uh, a fair amount of time, that's for sure. Travis uh, Varco is going to be missing one week due to a bump on Luke Dalhouse earlier. In the game, my votes for this match: I've given one vote to Lockie Hunter from the Western Bulldogs. He kicked three goals. Uh, two of them were early on. Uh, he looked like the best uh, player out there early, actually. He was really in amongst it early in the first half. Dropped off in the second half a little bit, but had a really, really good game. A lot of the ball, and he's deserving of the one vote. The two votes, Scott Pendlebury. Uh, he was outstanding. Uh, he got 35 disposals, two goals, more handballs and kicks. So he had a, a lot of those give-and-go um, give go things uh, and, uh, yeah, had a lot of it. Uh, and it looked like that injury that he suffered uh, hasn't really affected him too much. He was at his absolute best. Well done to Scott Panterbury, two votes. And the three votes goes to the Norm Smith medalist of last year, Jason Johannesson. He got two goals, 30 disposals, 18 kicks, had a huge impact in this game. Five games on Saturday, which included the inaugural AFLW Grand Final for 2017. How good has the women's competition been in its first year? It has been quite outstanding. Uh, ever since the first game, people have been flocking through to see the women's game, and uh, the AFLW Grand Final was no doubt a huge success. The Brisbane Lions were taking on the Adelaide Crows 
in this game. Uh, the Adelaide Crows actually scored uh, very early on. When I mean early on, I mean practically right after the ball was uh, thrown up. So uh, they got off to a good start. They had a quarter time lead of 2-1 to 1-0. So a seven point lead there to the Crows. They had the edge at quarter time. Uh, the Crows uh, had a lead. They actually were goalless in the second quarter. Uh, Lions kicked one. The Crows were, were a bit inaccurate. They kicked a lot of behinds. They had the lead at half time, 2 7 to 2 1. And then they were able to hold the three quarter time lead as well, 4 9 to the Lions, 3 3. A thrilling finish with the Lions coming back, uh, but it wasn't enough. The Crows were able to lift the 2017 AFLW Trophy and become the first women's team to do just that. The final score, the Brisbane Lions, 4-5-29, defeated by the Adelaide Crows, 4-11-35, in a thrilling finish to the AFLW season. And congratulations to the Crows. Congratulations to everyone a part of the women's uh, competition this year. It's been a huge success. I've loved it. Everyone's loved it, I think. And uh, it's only going to get better, of course. We've seen the... Uh, We've seen how uh, WBBL has uh, has gotten and how big of a success that's been. And, and I think uh, the AFL uh, women's competition is just going to be even bigger. So uh, let's go through the goal kickers here. Uh, we Shenna has kicked, uh, kicked two. Uh, Frederick Trapp and Harris kicked uh, singles for Adelaide. And then the... Uh, uh, sorry, Brisbane. Sorry, that was the Brisbane goal kickers. And then Adelaide goal kickers. Phillips kicked two. Gibson and also the Hagner uh, kicked Singles there, the best players uh, for the Lions: Bates, Frederick Trapp, uh, Vigo, uh, Castler uh, Hunt, and also Ash uh, Moore were best players for the Lions. And the Adelaide Crows' best players were Phillips, Randall, Mifnoff, uh, Crammy, and Gibson, and also Beaven. So that was the best players there. And uh, well, more people attended this match than the Gold Coast Suns and the Brisbane Lions. That's saying something. Uh, just over. Uh, well, over 15,500 attended this match at Metricon Stadium, 15,610 is the exact attendance uh, number. So congratulations to everyone involved in the women's competition. Congratulations to the Crows, winners of the 2017 AFLW competition. At 4.35pm at Etihad Stadium on Saturday, Melbourne were taking on St Kilda. This was a highly anticipated game. It was St Kilda's home game. Melbourne hadn't been beaten St Kilda at Etihad Stadium since 2002. Uh, they haven't won at Etihad Stadium often and St Kilda have won the past 14 clashes coming into this game. So it was a highly anticipated game as well because of the fact that these two teams are probably best in place to be the most improved teams of 2017. So to see them uh, in action playing each other early in the season was quite outstanding. And St Kilda actually got off to a really convincing start. They had a convincing quarter, uh, led 6-2 to 2-3 at quarter time. However, the Ds, uh, it looked a little bit ugly early. It looked like the Saints were going to take it away from the Ds and, and it was going to be the Saints game for the taking. But uh, the Ds got themselves in front at half time and actually didn't put a foot wrong for the rest of the game. They dominated from there and won the match in quite convincing fashion. The final score, St Kilda 13-12-90, uh, defeated by uh, Melbourne 18-12-120 in front of uh, over 36,000 at Etihad Stadium. Uh, there you go, Melbourne uh, break a drought and win under their new coach Simon Goodwin with uh, new players such as uh, Jordan Lewis in their side. Uh, it was a great win for them. Let's go through the goal kickers uh, for St Kilda. We have Rewalt who kicked four. Uh, of course, he got injured and he's probably going to be out for a, uh, a bit of time. In fact, he might be out with a, uh, for a fortnight, uh, which is quite lucky considering he looked like he was in some pain and looked like he'd done an ACL. So that's uh, good news there. Greasham kicked three. Billings Armitage, Membry, uh, Loney, uh, Dust. Dust, Dust, uh, sorry, Dunstan, and also Bruce kicked singles in this uh, in this match. And then the Melbourne goal kickers, Garlic kicked three, Hogan also kicked three, Hannon kicked two, as well as Petrarca, Stretch, Watts, Wiedemann, Jetta, Vince, Neil, Bullen, Brayshaw, and Jones kicked singles. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, Nick Rewalt went down with a knee, had to get uh, uh, stretched it off, I guess. 
uh, and Paddy McCarnan was replaced in the side by Jack Loney early on in the uh, earlier on before the game, and then Joel Smith uh, has a uh, left shoulder complaint, and Max Gorn uh, has uh, some back tightness. So hopefully those two are okay for Melbourne's game against Colton next Sunday. So, um, yeah, Melbourne get bragging rights, I guess, for uh, at this present time for the most improved team of uh, 2017. And just going through the votes for uh, St Kilda and Melbourne, uh, I've given one vote to Clayton Oliver, 36 disposals, 122 fantasy points, played with a great impact in the game, had a great impact in the game, uh, and uh, two votes have gone Jesse Hogan, he was impressive, four goals, 21 disposals, 118 fantasy points, and then the three votes goes to the Melbourne co-captain, and that is Nathan Jones, had an impressive game as the co-captain, 35 disposals, one goal, had a big impact, and uh, was one of the, uh, the big players who led Melbourne to their first victory of 2017 in this opening round. Now the other 4.35 uh, p.m. game on Saturday was happening at the SCG between the Swans and the Power. The start of probably three upsets on this Saturday and uh, look, uh, they trailed by a point the Power uh, at, uh, at quarter time, but however... From there, they managed to lead at every change after quarter time, and uh, the Power won by 28 points in this match. It was quite uh, outstanding and quite, uh, I guess, su um, surprising what we saw at the SCG on Saturday. We know that they have been uh, probably the, the one team that's been talked about over the preseason, especially in the last couple of weeks with, uh, with David Koch making his comments. Ken Hinckley under a lot of pressure in, in 2017 to make the finals. Well, they get off to a good start and uh, and get themselves, uh, I guess, one step closer to making the finals in 2017. The final score was the Swans 12-10-82, defeated by Port Adelaide at their home ground 17-8-110. Let's go through the goal kickers. Franklin kicked four for the Swans. Uh, also for the Swans was Reed kicking three. Robinson, Kennedy, Jones, Tippett, and also Jack uh, getting on the goal sheet with uh, singles. And then the Port Adelaide goal kickers, Young kick three, Wingard kick three, Boak, Powell, Pepper, and Dixon kick two each. By the way, Sam, Powell, Pepper, you might uh, notice uh, or uh, just remember that I uh, tipped Sam, Powell, Pepper as my rising star for 2017. Well, he's already been nominated in this opening round as the NAB rising star for round one. So congratulations to him. He had a fantastic game on Saturday. Tringrove, uh, Burn jones uh, Armin Pollock and also Hartlett uh, getting on the goal sheet with singles. Uh, the only injury to come out of the game was Dan Robertson with a shoulder. This game played uh, in front of uh, over 33,000 at the SCG. And my votes for the Best and Fairest Award, the show's Best and Fairest Award, I've given one vote to Brad Ebert from Port Adelaide. Uh, 25 disposals, 116 fantasy points. I thought he had a great impact in the game. The two votes goes to a Swans player in Josh P. Kennedy. By far the uh, probably the most outstanding player on the field, although Franklin kicked four goals, so he was quite impressive. Uh, tw although Josh P. Kennedy got 28 disposals, one goal, 118 fantasy points. Yeah, like I said, probably the best uh, out there for the Swans. And then the three votes I've given to Ollie Wines, uh, who, uh, by the way, uh, managed to uh, step in and watch my uh, my episode of the Bev Show a couple of weeks ago. He actually uh, typed a comment and said who I'd make who would make the top four. And I, I, I even though he was in the chat room, I couldn't put Port Adelaide in my top four. But maybe regretting it now. He had an outstanding game. Uh, he got uh, the most disposals out of any player in the game with 33, 17 goals, 16 handballs. He only got the 110 fantasy points, but he was the best on ground for me. He played fantastically. The first of the Saturday night games was at the MCG. The Bombers taking on the Hawks. A big occasion for the Bombers, of course. Their players returning to the MCG for the first time in over 12 months. Uh, and uh, the Hawks, of course, uh, they, uh, they lost Mitchell Lewis. They don't have Hodge in this game either. So they had a few players missing in terms of who played last year. So it was going to be very interesting to see how they would go. Although I don't think many people really thought... I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think many people really gave the Bombers a 100% chance of winning this. Maybe a 50% chance at the least, but not a 100% chance of winning it. Uh, you can't give any team 100% chance, really, although unless uh, a team is really doing that bad. But anyway, the Bombers kicked the first three goals of the match, so they got off to a good start. 
and led at quarter time by 13 points, 4-4 four, four to 2-3. The Hawks, however, got back and held the half-time lead, 6-10 to 5-8. However, the second half was uh, purely all about Essendon because they basically uh, started to take the game away from the Hawks. It was a 12-12 10-14 lead to the Bombers at three-quarter time and then in the end Essendon were able to hold the Hawks off and win the match by 25 points to make the comeback so, so sweet. The final score, the Bombers 17-14-116 defeated Hawthorne 12-9-91. You couldn't have wrote the script any better than this. The goal kickers for Essendon, Fantasia was outstanding, kicked four. Uh, Danaher kicked three. Hooker, Heppel also kicked three. Stanton kicked two. Zaharakis and McKernan on the score sheet with singles. The Hawks goal kickers, Roughhead, of course, he returned to the game for the first time since the 2015 AFL Grand Final. He got two goals. He was quite, uh, it was quite a good return from him. Congratulations to him for, for returning, by the way. Palopolo, McAvoy kicked two each, and then Rioli, Bruce, Shaw, Makers, Shields, Hart, Tongue, and Smith kicked singles each for the Hawks. Uh, it's uh, very worthy to point out that this was the biggest crowd between the two sides in a home and away match. So the crowd was 78,294. So well done to everyone who turned up to the G on Saturday night and made this uh, one of the blockbusters of round one. It's no question about that. The only injury to report was uh, Rioli with a thigh injury. So hopefully he's okay because he has actually battled through some injuries in the past. So let's hope he's not out for... Uh, for an extended amount of time. Let's hope he's back next week to play against the Crows from a Hawks point of view. In terms of the votes, I've given uh, one vote to Tom Mitchell. 37 disposals, uh, equal highest disposals with Zach Merritt for the match. Uh, 128 fantasy points. He had a good debut for his new club in this uh, first home and away match uh, for season 2017. The two votes I've given to Zach Merritt from Essendon. As mentioned, 37 disposals. Uh, he had 23 kicks, uh, which was the most of the match. Uh, and uh, he managed to collect 129 fantasy points. And I've given three votes to the captain, the new captain of Dyson Heppel. Uh, he kicked three goals, 34 disposals, 156 fantasy points. He had a great debut as captain. And, uh, yeah, well done to Dyson Happel. He looks like he uh, hasn't lost it uh, from, from where, he's, where we saw him in, in 2015. So there you go. Possibly the biggest upset. Maybe, uh, maybe level with the Swans of Port Adelaide because that was a, uh, a real great comeback from the Bombers. The final game of Saturday was at Metricon between the Gold Coast Suns and the Brisbane Lions, the Q Clash. And uh, this was a very, very dominant display by the Lions early. They were very dominant, leading 7-3 to 2-2 at quarter time. That is a real, real big improvement from last year. They weren't kicking that many goals last year in a quarter. So... That is a very, very good, uh, a good quarter time scoreline for the Lions. It was uh, probably even better at halftime. Uh, they restricted to the Suns to only one goal and a couple of, a few behinds, uh, and led 11-3 to 3-5 at half time. Although the second half, the Suns narrowed the margin uh, in time for the third quarter, and uh, they only trailed 11-6 to. Uh, 14-5, so they gave themselves a bit of a chance at the three-quarter time break, and uh, well, the Suns managed to get uh, back into it in the fourth quarter and get them uh, basically level with the Lions uh, in the final term, so it, it turned out to be a thriller match, even though it looked like the Lions were going to take away the game and be pretty dominant. Uh, the Suns uh, got back in it and uh, probably had the chance to win it, but uh, the Lions were able to strug, uh, strug, slug them off rather and win by two points. The final score, the Gold Coast Suns, 14-12-96, defeated by the Lions, 15-8-98. The goal kickers, uh, Lynch, uh, this is from the Gold Coast Suns, Lynch kicked three. He was uh, showing that he's probably one of the best uh, forwards in the game. Ainsworth and Hall kicked two each. Sexton, Miller, Archie, Barlow. Lemons, Wright, and Schoenfield kicked uh, singles for the Lions for the uh, sorry for the Gold Coast Suns, and then the Lions goal kickers uh, Bastinac kicked three, Robertson, Hipwood, Zorko kicked two each, Buick, Rich, 
Taylor close Leicester and Bell kicked singles each. And the only injuries to report was Swallow. He actually uh, got replaced. He was a late withdrawal from the side. Martin got a cut eye. Uh, so that's uh, both players from the Gold Coast Suns there. The votes for this match, I've given uh, one vote to Aaron Hall uh, from the Gold Coast Suns. 25 disposals, 109 fantasy points, two goals. Had a great impact uh, in terms of the Suns. And he was probably the best Suns player out there, so he gets the one vote for me. The two votes goes to Dane Zorko from the Lions. Two goals, had a lot of the ball with 23 disposals. He had a very, very good game. And then the three votes, I've given it to Tom Rockliffe from the Lions. 37 disposals, most for the game, 127 fantasy points. He had a big, big impact, and it's good to see him having a big, big impact for the Lions. Of course, we know that uh, he could have been leaving at the end of last season, but uh, that wasn't the case, and it's good to see him uh, playing well for the Lions in this opening game. Sunday, there were three games. It all started at Eddie Had Stadium, 10 past 1 p.m., with North Melbourne taking on the Eagles. It's fair to say that North Melbourne had a uh, very good start to the match because they had the quarter-time lead of 4-6 uh, to 3-3. Uh, and they did take it up to the Eagles, I thought, in uh, especially the first quarter, but also the first half. Uh, however... The Eagles managed to dominate the second half and take it right away from the Kangaroos and win convincingly in the end. North Melbourne 13-15, 93, defeated by the Eagles at Etihad Stadium, 21-10, 136. Although uh, the score of 93 was quite okay from North Melbourne. I think that's a pretty high score considering you're up against... Um, a possible grand final contender uh, this year. Uh, the goal kickers uh, for North Melbourne, Goldstein kicked three, Brown kicked two as well as Turner, Atley, Zebel, uh, Prius, Hovat, Tarrant and Waite who kicked one goal seven. One goal and seven behinds in a match of footy. That is um, unheard of but welcome to round one. I guess that's what happens in the opening round of the footy season. We will... Uh, well, we'll take the pressure off him a little bit. We won't put the pressure on him too much, although one goal, seven behinds is not the best effort there. Uh, and the goal kicks from the West Coast Eagles, Kennedy, well, Wade got seven behinds. Kennedy got seven goals for the match. Uh, Lacrasse kicked four, Cripps kicked three, Ye Yeo, Darling kicked two each, Jetta, Hill, and also Petrie kicked uh, singles for the, uh, the match. Uh, the, uh, the only injury to report was Petrie with a hand for the West Coast Eagles. And uh, nearly 22,000 attended this game at Eddie Had Stadium. The votes, I've given one vote to Andrew Gap from the Eagles. 36 disposals, had a lot of influence in the game. Uh, two votes, Sam Mitchell. He had a good debut for his new club in the home and away season. Got uh, most disposals for the match with 38. And I've had to give three votes to Josh Kennedy. He was outstanding. Seven goals to start off his, uh, I guess, Norm Smith campaign because he's going to be right up there in the top five of the leading goal kickers this year. Sorry, not Norm Smith, Coleman medalist. I, I can't believe I got that mixed up just then. The Coleman medalist, top five of the Coleman medalist. The mid-Sunday afternoon match was possibly the match of the round between the Crows and the Giants. Of course, the Giants' premiership favourites. The Crows, not really sure what to expect for them. Uh, from them in, in season 2017. That's just my view anyway. The Giants led early in the in the game. The first quarter, they had the quarter time score 4-5 to 2-3 before giving it up at half time 7-9 to 6-7. From there though, the Crows took the game away and won pretty convincingly in the end, I thought. 22-15, 147. The Crows defeated the Giants at, their, at uh, Adelaide Oval 14-7. Uh, 91. I said that on the Ultimate AFL preview show that this could possibly be a doomsday scenario if the Giants lost, and it's well, it's it's more than a doomsday scenario. They're, they're on the bottom of the ladder after round one. You probably wouldn't have expected that from the Premiership favourites, but uh, I guess Fremantle was Premiership favourites in some way last year, and 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 or, or around about there, and and they well they they were on the bottom of the ladder earlier in the season, weren't they? So, um, the goal kickers for the Crows, uh, Betts kick four, Atkins kick three, as well as Jenkins, McGovern, Cameron Douglas, Knight kick two each, and then McKay, Menzel, Smith, Malira kicked singles for the Giants, Cameron kick four, Smith kick three, Scully I thought was impressive, kicked two 
goals. Green, Lobb, Kennedy, Johnson, Patton, and all, and yeah, that's it. That's all uh, kicking singles for the Giants. Uh, the injuries, uh, like I said, Walker actually was named in the first uh, team, but uh, he was replaced by Knight. He was no, he was nowhere near going to play. Uh, even though he got named in the first side, he surely wasn't going to play. Uh, and the injuries, Magunzu uh, had to go off in the second quarter. He had a hamstring problem, didn't return for the rest of the game. A good crowd there, a healthy crowd, nearly uh, 44,000 at Adelaide Oval. And the votes for me, I've given one vote to Charlie Cameron. He had, uh, from the Crows, he, kicked, uh, he had 23 disposals and had a pretty good uh, day with uh, two goals as well to go with it. Uh, the two votes I've given to uh, Rory Atkins from the Crows as well, three goals. Uh, he got 19 disposals, uh, 114 fantasy points. And then the three votes has went to the other Rory, Rory Laid. He had a massive 40 disposals, 142 fantasy points. He was impressive. And in the final game, to wrap up what was a massive opening week of uh, the 2017 AFL season, Fremantle and Geelong. I thought this might have been a little bit of a closer game than it turned out to be because Geelong uh, basically controlled the match uh, all the way through. Fremantle showed a few signs, uh, but uh, Geelong too strong. The final score, Fremantle 10-13-73, defeated by Geelong at Domain Stadium 18-7. 115. The goal kickers from the Dockers: uh, Langdon, Subin, Neil, uh, S. Hill, Fife, Walters, uh, B. Hill, McCarthy, uh, Blakely, and also Piers uh, kicked uh, singles. So no multiple goal kickers there from the Dockers. That is interesting. And then the uh, goal kickers from the Cats: Hawkins kicked three as well as McCarthy, Dangerfield, Motlop, uh, and then Menzel kicked two, Murdoch, Tui, Duncan, and Cocker two kicked singles each for the. Cats, uh, Sack Smith missed uh, the game. He got replaced by Jackson Thurlow before the match. Uh, just over 34,500 uh, thousand attended the match at Domain Stadium. And my uh, votes, I've given one vote to Nat Fife. I thought he had a good game. 28 disposals, a goal. Nice return. Uh, two votes, Mitch Duncan, a goal. 30 disposals, 128 fantasy points. He was impressive. And then the three votes goes to the Brownlow medalist of last year, Patrick Dangerfield. Three goals, 24 disposals. Only the 118 fantasy points, but I thought he had a solid game. And uh, I'm not sure how the umpires saw it, whether they agree with me or not. But uh, I think Patrick Dangerfield was... Uh, Slightly best uh, out there on the uh, on the Domain Stadium in Perth. Okay, time now to have a look at the stats wrap up after round one. I did this last year on the Ultimate AFL show. I'm doing it here on the Ultimate AFL wrap up show. This is the leading disposals, goals, marks, and tackles. Let's start with the leading disposals. Rory Lard is uh, top with 40 disposals. He had a good game against the Giants. Uh, Sam Mitchell is second on 38 and level on 30. Zach Merritt, Tom Mitchell, and Tom Rockcliffe all on 37 disposals. The leading goal kickers, Josh Kennedy, kicked a bag against the Kangaroos. He is top with seven goals. Uh, Betts, Cameron, Vantasia, and Lance Franklin level second with four goals. The marks, Andrew Gaff leads, uh, and uh, as well as Tom McDonald, they both lead with 13 marks. Uh, McGovern, Jeremy McGovern from the Eagles, have, have took 12 marks on the weekend, and he is third. And then level fourth, we have Heath Grundy from the Swans and Lockie Henderson from Geelong, level on 11 marks apiece. And then the tackles, uh, Lin Jong and Tom Libertore, two Bulldog men, applied the most tackles in the game against Collingwood in round one on Friday night. Uh, 14 tackles apiece there, both of them. Taylor Adams and Nick Vustlin level third with 12 go uh, 12 tackles. And then Brad Ebert from Port Adelaide, uh, fifth on 11 tackles. So that is the stats wrap-up after round one. Let's now have a look at the ladder after round one. Uh, doesn't really matter too much at this stage because it is the only it is the early stages of the season. It's only round one, but it is interesting to look at because it will change probably dramatically as the season goes on. The Crows top of the table after a big win against the Giants. Of course, sends the Giants to uh, last on the ladder. Geelong have slotted to second after a big win against the Dockers. Richmond third. And West Coast round out the top four. And then rounding out the top eight, we have Port Adelaide fifth, Melbourne sixth, and Essendon seventh, as well as the Western Bulldogs eighth. 
Uh, and then the bottom half of the ladder, the Brisbane Lions, uh, couldn't quite uh, step into the uh, the top eight. They're ninth with the Gold Coast Suns, 10th, Collingwood, 11th, Hawks, 12th, Saints, 13th, Swans, 14th, North Melbourne, 15th, Colton, 16th, and then we've got Fremantle, 17th, as mentioned, the Giants, bottom of the ladder, the Premiership favourites, bottom with a uh, on 18 with zero points. So that is the ladder after round one. And that is it for episode five of the Ultimate AFL Wrap-Up Show, where I wrapped up AFL Round 1 and the AFLW Grand Final. Thank you very much for watching, of course. Don't forget to like, comment, share this video. Please stick around because uh, I also preview every match of every round through the Ultimate AFL Preview Show, which will be uploaded uh, uh, before the uh, game on Thursday night between Richmond and Collingwood to open round two. So do stay tuned for that. Of course, stay tuned for another episode of this show next week as I wrap up round two. And of course, don't forget to check out all my other content as well. Horse racing uh, in full swing with the Group 1 races. Of course, the Sydney Autumn Carnival is well underway. The championships this week, so uh, the big Group 1 racing show this week will be absolutely massive as it always uh, is when I do an episode of that. And of course, don't forget to stick around for other content as well, including The Bev Show, which is a live stream that I uh, do on Facebook at facebook.com slash The Bev Show every Monday night at 8.45pm. So go check that out as well if you want to interact with me live. So thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.